Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to compare CyberGhost VPN to Slick VPN. So these are two different VPN services that exist out there. Uh, being able to put your computer behind a server um, for Windows, mobile devices, Linux, and routers, as long as you set it up on those machines. So um, first we'll talk a little bit about the interfaces, which aren't too big of a deal, and then we'll be moving on to what's more important, actual benchmarking data between these two apps that I've pulled up uh, between last night and this morning. So uh, to get started, with CyberGhost, it presents you six options inside of the interface, uh, once you're on the pro version. I think on the free version, you only get like surf anonymously, and uh, on the free version, you do have to wait in a queue, but there is actually a free version, which is actually kind of sweet. Um, it definitely, if you're going to go for a free version, I'd probably just do CyberGhost because I've had no problems with CyberGhost. Uh, but SlickVPN is 100% paid. So uh, putting that aside, um, in this interface, it looks like you have six different options. And in a sense, you do. Uh, what it's really doing with like surf anonymously, torrent anonymously, unblocked basic websites, blah, 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 is to help you uh, pick out a server that actually meets the needs um, of whatever you're trying to do. So, for instance, if you go to unblock streaming, they're going to be streaming sites like Hulu.com, uh, which may require you to be in a certain country like the U.S. I think Hulu is only U.S., right? It is. So by choosing these options, it's going to basically uh, force you under a server that's in the U.S., making sure that you can unblock Hulu, uh, for instance, because if you were to connect to a different server, it wouldn't work because it's going to see that you're not in the U.S. Um, and then, like, torrent anonymously, not every CyberGhost server actually allows you to torrent. Um, why that is, not sure. Um, but yeah, uh, servers like Hong Kong, or most of the ones in the U.S. even don't allow that. Um, maybe it's for their uh, kind of legal concerns. Uh, and then you just have things like Surf Anonymously, which I think just kind of grabs you uh, a country and gives you the best server because it's just very general web browsing. But if you do want to select a very specific server, you go over to Choose My Server, and then you can compare the servers uh, by different um, metrics, like how empty, what's the user load on the server. So here you can see Austria is pretty empty right now. Or uh, you can do torrent so that it only provides you servers that are actually torrent supported, which by the looks of it is pretty much exclusively Europe. Um, and then fastest servers, which will allow you to kind of do a ping test between your computer and that server, theoretically getting you better speeds, uh, which would be important for things like gaming. Um, so in the settings menu, you can add a couple things in, like uh, app protection if you want to boot up a certain application, like your torrenting application, Qubit Torrent. Um, whenever you, uh, or rather, whenever you do open that app, it would automatically switch to that mode. That's the idea here. So you open the torrent, it torrents anonymously. Um, and then a few other settings, which for the most part, uh, you're not really going to need to mess around with too much. Um, I would say under the general tab, automatically run at system startup and which profile you want to choose at startup are probably going to be ones that you do want to turn on. But unless you're pretty advanced, most of this stuff is not going to be too relevant to you. But like things like proxies, they're pretty standard. Um, likewise, you go over to the preferences of Slick VPN and you have this same kind of stuff for the most part. Launch at startup, connect at startup, start minimized. Things that if you do always use, it's like VPN, you're probably going to want those checked so that you're always under the VPN and always having those anonymous benefits. Um, let's see, uh, whether you want to route the traffic through VPN, adding in custom parameters, uh, pretty much stuff that only advanced users are going to want to mess around with. So for the most part, it's pretty much, do you want to start at, and start when you boot your computer? If so, then great. Um, so, of course, uh, CyberGhost has the ping test here where you choose the fastest servers. And then uh, the speed test for Slick VPN only is active while you, well, you can do the speed test, but obviously because I'm currently connected to the VPN, um, it's not going to let me do that because it, it makes no sense to be pinging from the server location to other servers. The ping you want is from your computer to those servers.
Um, so you basically just choose the surface you want to ping. You hit ping, and it gives you the millisecond response time. Um, on locations, you can see the different uh, kind of server hubs throughout the world. Um, obviously, cities like New York are going to have more servers than other ones. Uh, and you can see the server map on uh, basically map for both CyberGhost and uh, Slick VPN. They're mostly in uh, Europe and the United States, but you do have a few servers over in places like Asia and, and South Africa, kind of randomly. Is that one in Australia? That's got to be a joke. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, anyway, uh, one of the differences is, though, um, in the Slick VPN interface, when you do connect or disconnect, it'll kind of give you this log messages uh, just straight up on what's going on with uh, your connection. Might be useful for debugging. I'm not actually sure. Is there a log on CyberGhost by default, at least? I don't think there is. Um, there might be a way to actually get that set up. But uh, let's actually just move on to what we really care about, which is the benchmark data. And I'm going to have um, all of this data down below that I collected with links to the speed test results. So speedtest.net being a pretty sweet site now for um, actually testing connection speeds. So here on my right tab, what we're looking at right now is the CyberGhost VPN connection, which is between uh, one of the Hong Kong servers and a speed test location also within Hong Kong. That's the Entru VTC server, I guess. Uh, so the ping was 54 milliseconds. The download speed was 50.59 megabits per second, uh, which if you divide that by eight, will give you megabytes per second. So um, I think that's something around six or seven megabytes per second. So that's actually really good. And then upload speed of 22.80 uh, uh, megabits per second. So good results there. Um, uh, FYI, currently located in Asia, so that's why the uh, Asia servers are going to give me quick response times and good download rates. Um, but over here we have the uh, the data for Slick VPN. So uh, Slick VPN, and I'm guessing a lot of VPNs do this claims that it's the fastest VPN out there, but um, the data in general just wasn't showing that for me. So here you got a 65 millisecond response time, so that's a little bit slower. Um, for some of the data tests I did, uh, the ping was actually lower. But I think what really matters here isn't like 5 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds on the response time, but the download and upload speeds. So here, I only got 6.17 megabits per second download and 8.99 megabits per second upload. Um, now, I wasn't sure about the data last night because here the internet usually gets bogged down in the internet. Uh, um, in the evening, rather, and uh, this was a test for the morning, so the internet is pretty clean here, so probably getting the most accurate results I can. So, it, just in terms of the Hong Kong test, it was like uh, eight or nine times faster on CyberGhost. Now, um, here we could talk a little bit more about some of the other data. So, the London test, so this is from somewhere in Asia to London, um, 12.59 megabits per second on the slick vpn for download 0 0.65 megabits per second upload don't know what's going on there but that's actually very slow uh, compared to the cyber ghost which was 20 megabits per second download 8.46 megabits per second upload and then i also tested los angeles where on slick vpn it was 9.44 megabits per second download 6.97 megabits per second upload um, now, admittedly, the ping was faster there, considerably faster, 20, 229 ping, uh, whereas the Los Angeles test on CyberGhost was 283 ping. But the upload speed and the download speed, once again, higher on CyberGhost at 14.72 megabits per second download and 12.48 megabits per second upload. So kind of confirming what I was seeing last night. Oh, and by the way, last night from Singapore server, I was getting 68.62 megabits per second, which is pretty awesome to be honest. Um, but yeah, just kind of going back, looking through my data, in pretty much all the cases, I was getting faster results um, in Slick VPN. I guess maybe the exception was here with the Seattle server, got 18.25 on Slick VPN, and then New York 
uh, five megabits per second, but that's maybe not fair. I, I guess you would want to compare it to the San Francisco one, because that's a lot closer to Seattle, Washington. So that was 29.91 mil- megabits per second for San Francisco, 18 megabits upload. And then Seattle was 18.25 download, 13.55 upload. So I'm going to have all of this um, data in the description, so you can just go compare the different results if you want. Overall, what I can conclude from my tests is that even though the ping is relatively competitive between the two, and maybe even slightly in favor of Slick VPN, that the download speeds I was getting from their servers were quite lackluster by comparison, uh, being anywhere between two and nine times slower. So um, that might not matter so much for everybody. Like if you're getting nine megabits per second in download, uh, megabits per second in download speed, or one megabyte per second in download speed. Um, that's probably fine for most purposes, watching videos on the internet, but if you're going to be doing heavy downloading or anything like that, that could be a bit annoying, or, um, well, yeah, like, if you have Steam games you need to download, well, you could probably just do that without a VPN, but, um, in general, yeah, the servers are faster on CyberGhost, and the data showed that pretty much across the board. Um, so we can talk about a couple more things first, though. Uh, there is a few real big advantages to Slick VPN. Um, so first off, for some reason, not all of the CyberGhost servers support torrenting. So um, if that's a thing, I don't see any issues with that on Slick VPN. As far as I know, all of the servers do work for torrenting on Slick VPN networks. Um, so that's a minor advantage. But then uh, with CyberGhost Premium, the base version only actually gives you one device. So let's see, uh, it was $70 a year or $7 a month for one device on CyberGhost. Uh, whereas if you want five devices on CyberGhost, it's $110 a year or $11 a month. So uh, Slick VPN, the base price for five devices, I, th- I think they only have one purchase plan, is $10 a month. But if you won't go with the yearly version, it drops down to $4 a month, but paid as a one-year purchase. So that would become $48 per year for five devices. So that's actually something to think about. Uh, If you do have multiple devices you want to use with CyberGhost, uh, unless you can find some kind of sweet coupon out there, it's going to cost you a bit more, um, over twice as much uh, for that five-device plan. But of course... um, I'm sure that there's coupons out there you can find. Uh, and that kind of summarizes most of what goes on between CyberGhost and Slick VPN. So in conclusion, if I had to give my preference to one of these two platforms, I would probably say CyberGhost, um, unless you're kind of on a budget, in which case Slick VPN isn't too bad. Yes, the servers are a little bit slower. Um, if you play around with the servers, though, it seems like you can get up to like 20 megabits per second. Um, like I got with the Seattle, Washington server. So it might not be too bad. You may not notice too much difference there, but definitely if you need five devices, uh, there is that cost comparison to be considered. Uh, That said, if you are looking for a free VPN, you definitely can't go wrong with CyberGhost. Uh, The main limitations there are that you can't torrent with it and you do have to wait in a queue to connect, but for something you're getting for free that's still relatively fast that you can use on both mobile and your Windows machines, CyberGhost Free is pretty sweet, and CyberGhost Premium, uh, obviously pretty sweet as well, and the servers are pretty fast. Um, And, you know, I have experienced that in actual practice as well, um, being able to download and browse at pretty much full speed uh, on my internet connection. So, hopefully that gives you guys a pretty good comparison between CyberGhost and Slick VPN, the two different services, or two of the many different services that are out there. Um, Obviously, if neither of these seem like one that you want to use, you can go check some of the other ones out there. There are so many VPNs these days. Um, I mean, even like Avira Antivirus has its own phantom VPN now. But if you are interested in these, I will leave links to them down below, as well as all of the data I've collected. So thanks again for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.